Hey kids, welcome back to another video of pouring misadventures. Tonight uh, is a continuation of the GAC experiments, GAC 800 experiments. Um, I've been doing a bunch of test pours on smaller canvases, getting ready to do a larger one, not a big, big one, um, but an 18 by 24. So I want to make sure I got it right before I do that. Um, last night I did one in an experiment where, that was the Marrakesh uh, video, where I said that it was part A and that I um, put my puddle on the canvas and then I um, tilted and then I torched. And then I wanted to do another one where, and I did do another one, where I put my puddle on the canvas, I tilted, I torched, and then I tilted, and I got much bigger cells. Um, unfortunately, I, my battery ran out um, on my phone. So um, I think I was like two minutes into it mid-sentence when it might, and died. So I could show you the result of it, but I, unfortunately, I don't have a video, so I thought, well, that's not fair. I promised them a part B. So tonight's part B. Um, let me show you very carefully, very gingerly, uh, Marrakesh and Redenbacher. So Marrakesh, the red kind of dried a little bit darker, which I was expecting, um, but the cells held up really great and it'll probably look pretty great in the, in the light. So you can tell it's all nice and shiny. It's the GAC and nothing else. So let me see if I can zoom in on that. I'm still madly in love with it. I love having cells in the background and I love that aqua blue line running through the middle of it. <gasps> and the red up above with the little red background. Love, love, love. This is my preference for paintings. Um, I'm just gonna try and get the cells a little bit bigger but this is what I've been going on, going for all along. So let me put him away somewhere safe and sound. And so you can maybe sit right there and cure. And then the other one I did where the video died was Redenbacher for or Orville Redenbacher. And this one I torched and then tilted. Um, and I went to bed and if I had been smart, cause it was, it was late. It was like quarter after two in the morning. I'm like, I gotta, I gotta work in the morning. Um, I was, so I'm a bit tired, duh. And uh, had I waited a little longer, I would have tilted some more, like tilted some of these edges off to spread these cells. But for the first time after it, um, I'm highly pleased because I like the, let me see if I can do this, the multicolored background some very very vivid um a lot of great lacing of the uh the red um with the gold the two color background the blue and the red those blue cells um amazing it just needed and don't get me wrong it's a keeper totally um but the perfectionist in me would have spread those out just a little bit more. I did very selective torching where I didn't go shh. I kind of went chicken, shh, chicken, shh. and I should have then tilted a little bit more. Um, and uh, I think it would have been even better ever looking for that elusive whatever that's in my pea brain. I don't know what, but um, just always trying to improve. So Super, super happy with that effort though. Super happy. Seriously, like if, if that's the best I could ever do, um, I'd take it. I have some new ideas with what to do once I've mastered this with the acrylic pouring. I'm going to incorporate it into um, some traditional uh, acrylic brush stroke painting. Um, came up with an idea for that. Um, that I hope to work on in the next month or two, so I'm not quite ready for prime time. But um, that's just like a preview of what's coming down the road, I guess, in terms of me doing this. Because, you know, after a while, you can't just keep doing the same thing over and over. Um, and then finally, real quick, um, gosh, six, six, eight months ago, 
I was on a kick where I did several paintings using the sponge method, um, which was really interesting. You got some really cool effects. This is just a little painting that hangs in our bathroom because it looks very much like sudsy waves, like this. And I thought I might do just a little painting in this style and show you guys how you can create cells and cool patterns. And you really do get to dictate where you want things like having a swirl. Like people who do the, um, the wave pours, uh, you could, I'm not into the wave pours. Um, I don't know why a lot of them are great I just I don't know not my thing um, but you can really control how that looks and this is a good example here of like having a splash so maybe why I don't do a wave painting I might do an ocean splash where you just have some negative space with the waves you know the splash is coming up um, if you're interested in that leave me comments say yes I'll know what you're talking about uh, and I will do one of those videos. I'm not gonna do it if everyone's like, what the hell is she doing this for? I wanna see fluid acrylic pouring. So, um, with all that out of the way, let's get down to the canvas. And let me move that a little closer to you. I apologize for the mess. I never, like I said, I went to bed really late. I uh, never got a chance to clean up, and then I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna do a quick pour tonight, so. I left it. Tonight I have a nice, uh, so I hope I don't screw it up, a really nice pre-adjusted smooth ampersand uh, cradle birch wood panel. Um, I thought about taping up the sides and just doing the top and then resining it, but I think I'm gonna let it pour over and resin it and then polycrylic the sides. I don't like resin on the sides because it, uh, it gets kind of ripply and I want it smooth. So, oh, I hate to dirty these cups, but oh well. Oh yeah, see things are sticking. All right, get that a little closer to you guys, like that. Maybe back a little bit my way. Let me dork around with this. And I think last week or the week before I was talking, I was on a, um, a kick where I really wanted to do a monochromatic chromatic pour and I did a purple painting and then I ended up kind of cheating because I threw in grays and white and uh, which is no longer monochromatic is it if it's not all you know variations of the same color and I still owe you guys an ombre pour and I haven't forgotten about that um, so tonight I'm going to do the monochromatic with blues because I haven't done an all blue painting uh, in a while and gosh don't we love our blues so I have four colors tonight. Um, I have an Amsterdam. This is grayish blue. It's kind of boring. I guess it's nice, I don't know. I'm kind of meh on it right now. It looks like this in the cup. Um, I have a Liquitex Basic. This is the cobalt blue. Uh, I have my favorite, favorite, my Windsor Newton Galleria in the Windsor blue which is my dark color. And then my final medium color is, uh, what is this? Light ultramarine, golden. So no heavy bodies. I'm staying away from the heavy body with the, with the GAC 800. They don't like each other. That's my uh, working theory as I mentioned uh, last night. So I mixed my paints already. Got that nice consistency where it pours off leaves a trace for like a second and then disappears. I'm uh, over overestimated with that blue gray, so I'm gonna have to save some of that. Um, or do another pour. I bought a bunch of uh, small canvases to uh, practice on. So I'm just gonna add a little silicone to these guys, like uh, one, two, three in that one, two in that one. Doing that, and maybe this says a lot. I'll give this guy one, three. Light stir. Let's make a little star. And then nothing in my white. Got an extra cup here. And I'm torn. I'm torn between going old school and just doing 
a good old regular dirty pour, you know? Like we did when we all were first learning, or maybe you're first learning, and you're like, what's dirty pour? Everyone I see is layering colors in the cup, because we've all kind of evolved to that, uh, that method. Um, or some people do it where they pour the colors down the side into their white. Um, what do I want to do? Let me put on some gloves and think about it for a second. I want to, or do I want to layer because I have all these different color blues? Decisions, decisions. I think I want to uh, be, want to be safe or adventurous. I'm going to be boring and layer. Are all of you out there going, aw, or should I dirty pour? Should I just flip a coin? Oh. Flip a cup. If it lands up, dirty pour. If it falls down like this, then I layer. It fell down, I layer. That was lame. I apologize, that was really lame. Oh, screw it, let's just do, let's do a dirty pour. It's in my head now. All right. Dirty pour on high. I'm gonna go with this blue-gray color first into the white and then some on top. So I'm gonna to do kind of half and half. Go with the cobalt next. And some on top. And this. It's kind of fun, it's easy. It's easier than layering. The winds are blue, how I love you. Into the white, a bunch on top. And I'm just gonna keep doing that. The, uh, this is a inch, this cradle panel is uh, an inch deep. So uh, I have more real estate than it looks like I do. So I'm gonna be do close to a full cup because of that. That's going to be enough. I'm just going to flip cup it. Do I see okay? like I have enough paint. All I have to do is make some white and I could do another, um, I have like a, a couple five by fives and six by sixes. Gotta love the uh, Dick Blicks back to school sale. I uh, stocked up. Fingers crossed. So we'll flip cup it, torch, and tilt. I'm going to torch first, right into the puddle. Whoa, I left half the paint in the cup. I did, I didn't mean to do that, so I'll do this. Stop it from running off the side. All right, torch. I like to let it let it settle a minute. Let the puddle 
figure out what it's doing, let it grow. Pop some bubbles. Make some cells. I wish I had a darker blue. That's what I wish. I wish I had a darker blue. I should have added some Payne's gray. Being picky again. All right, let's give this a tilt. Or let's let the cells grow a second, see if they get any bigger. It takes it a while. Um, that uh, Renbacher picture that was a good, like, the one section grew very slowly over the space of, like, a good 20 minutes. Now, I'm not going to make you guys sit here and stare at the uh, painting for 20 minutes. Uh, but let's give it a good minute. See how big they get. What's nice is, one thing that's nice, if there's a cluster you don't like or something, um, since we haven't tilted yet, you can maybe pour it off. Like, I don't like that right there. So, I'm going to try and go your way and get rid of it. We'll see if I'm successful or if I stretch it out too much or whatnot. i got to cover my sides on this guy. Go ahead off, I don't like you. All right, good. Come down my way a little bit. Come over this way. I'm gonna go back up, try to uh, save the shape of some of these. Especially those dark blue ones. Hmm. I'm gonna go this way and then back. I'm playing with shell cell shapes right now. Let me stop a second and, and take a look at it. Ponder a minute. I don't know. I think it's kind of boring. I mean, the cells are, are nice. I don't know. Maybe, um, not as enamored with uh, monochromatic pores as I thought I was. I'm like kind of over them. I used to be like enthralled and now I'm like, meh, nah, it's fine. So picky, how does your, uh, let me flip it around so I can, uh, I'm still just staring at it, seeing if I want to do something. I don't like the, the shape of this. Like it looks like, I don't know. Um, one thing I do want to point out that I think, uh, oh, there's a, hear that siren? That's the classic sign of a, of an ambulance going to Mount Sinai Hospital. That's what their siren, I figured out that they, different hospitals have different siren sounds in New York City. Who knew? Um, one thing I did want to point out, and I know I mentioned this. I don't know, three or four videos um, ago, I did a painting that had some GAC 800 and I believe Floetrol and maybe some PVA. Uh, and one side of the painting had very 
traditional looking Floetrol PVA cells and the other side had cells that I talked about were kidney shaped and classic, a classic sign of GAC and they are definitely showing up in this painting tonight because it's these guys. And they're always twins. They look like little brains almost. They just need some wrinkles and they would be brains. Um, and and I, I don't know why why it's uh, indicative of this product, but it's uh, you can always spot them and paint other people's paintings. I'm getting to the point where I can look at a painting and I'm not saying this to brag, but like I can look at a painting and say, oh, they just use water. Uh oh, that's a flow trial painting, or that's a mix of, you know, PVA or whatever, because they all have their own distinctive cells. And one of these days, I'll probably cause an uproar because I want to do a post about cells and all the different types of cells. And everyone has their preference, of course, of what makes a good cell. Um, or, you know, some people are just happy to get a cell at all, I know. Uh, but there really are differences, um, uh, not necessarily caused by the style of painting or whether or not you're tilting too much, but by the products you're using. So I just thought that that would be an, um, an interesting conversation. Uh, let me uh, flip it around so I can see the other side. Whoa. Oh, fairly well, fairly well covered. There. Let's do this right here. I might try to get some. There's a little bit of dark paint left in there. I'm too lazy to run and get my spoon. It still looks like stretched this way and I don't want it to. I want it to all be like round. Like I don't want you out there, you to be able to tell like, oh, she totally tilted it this way. You know what I mean? Like you can tell the direction. Um, what am I taking? I know, leave my gloves on. And I don't think there's anything I can do about it now. I'm gonna try to move it around a little bit. It really doesn't help. They're kind of, they're the shape that they are. All right. See, and then I really don't like it if it starts to go like this on the ends. That bugs me. Um, I'm going to give a torch and a couple little select spots, and uh, she's fine. I'm not Gaga. I'm not going to Lady Gaga over it. That was a really bad pun, wasn't it? Uh, it's fine, though. I'll take it. Get my uh, torch going. I'm going to torch my side, see if anything happens. Just for giggles. Go up high. I see a couple bubbles. And then, where do I want some cells? Like right here on this end right here. And they're gonna be white ones, that's fine. And maybe some baby ones right there. And I'm just gonna do a dash right here. hopefully those don't grow too big because then it's gonna gonna they'll be a bunched mess they'll be very very much like the uh Renbacher core where they really clumped up and that's what i'm trying to avoid yeah i see i probably shouldn't have done that oh well like i said all a good experiment i do think i have the consistency right um Definitely torch first for bigger cells. Um, you have to be very careful with your tilting. Um, 
just to be safe, I might do one more uh, before this weekend where I just try one more time where I tilt and then torch. Um, just to be sure that I can't get cells to grow because tilting first is just my personal preference on, on the, uh, the order of things because I like to be able to plan the background. Um, so let me uh, get the camera down, zoom in. Thanks for watching and supporting. Uh, check me out on Facebook at Waterfall Acrylics and on Instagram under the same name and touching up the side and uh, yeah I'll see you guys in a few days if not sooner because I'm obsessed you guys take care where are you uh, you guys oh, look at my hair oh my god you guys take care let me zoom in on the picture go this way so you can kind of see the cells there so the cells like I said the cells and the colors no complaints with the shape um, I think for for me this painting just needs where oops sorry I'm off the painting it just needs uh, more contrast like it's perfectly fine it's all blue um, doesn't really help any maybe a little there it uh it just needs more contrast to uh float my boat so we'll do that next time we'll mix it up all right until then you guys take care see you bye bye